How's it going? My name is Phil, also known as Machine Delusions, and this is V2 of the Synthetic LoRa Data Creator. Um, it's a fairly decent sized book, uh, multiple uses. The main purpose of this notebook or workflow is to generate consistent sets of images or data in a similar style to then be trained into a LoRa or a checkpoint. Um, some other use cases I've found for the book have been exploring multiple subjects across uh, similar settings, LoRa's IP adapters models. So there's a few things you can use this book for, but this is a general overview on how to operate it. So starting from the bottom left, we have a master kill switch section that pertains to all the samplers. Um, in this book, we have 25 samplers that generate the images and are populated at the top here. Um, and if we go ahead and we start flicking these kill switches, you can see some of them turn on and off. To the right of that, we have the high res fix section. Um, all of these settings in this left corner are going to uh, control all of this case samplers, including seed, CFG, steps, um, sampler, scheduler, and the high res fix settings. So the upscale by is a uh, percentage based, so it's 25%. We're doing 15 steps, denoise, and we're, we're looping this whole section twice. So 25% looped twice. To the right of that, we've got the master sampler settings for all the samplers, um, like I had mentioned previous. And now we have the efficient loader, which basically is gonna be your model, your VAE, um, and the base resolution, uh, as well as the batch size. So this is going to be controlling the batch size of all the case samplers. Um, in this example, I'm, I'm running one image for the sake of time. And then to the right of that, we have the LoRa stacker. Pretty self-explanatory. This is where you load in a multitude of LoRa's. You can have as many as you want here. And then to the right of that, we have the IP adapter, which is also attached to the kill switch, um, just in case you don't want to use influence from that. A pro tip for this um, is if you are going to be using an IP adapter, make sure you set the end steps as well as the weight to be appropriate or else you'll just get a carbon copy of, of basically whatever image you put in here. We have negative prompts under every one of the K samplers here in red. I left this variable and subject to change per sampler uh, because there are some subjects that are represented in the model that require a little more attention. On the far right of the book, we have the master positive prompt section as well as how the images and caption files get saved down into a folder. And I'll explain more about the captions in a, in a little bit. But if we go to the top here, you can see we have P1 through P25 representing each of the K samplers. Um, the first text box is supposed to be your subject or concept. And I have here uh, written in the title to keep this fairly simple. Um, reason being is it actually is responsible for naming all of the folders uh, as well as being a part of your caption and we don't want those being full paragraphs. So you will write your subject very simply here. That gets concatenated to the meat of the prompt, which uh, are variable for everyone. So think of this as like a supporting prompt of your main subject. And then all the way at the bottom, once you've filled out and found all your subjects you like, you have uh, an append prompt, which is basically all the descriptors, polished, high res, vibrant, smooth, blah, blah, blah. Um, um, and then to the right of that, we have the trigger word, uh, which is specifically going to be at the beginning of your captioned saved text files. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this. Um, I've just loaded it up with a custom, I actually I just got Photon loaded in here and some custom LoRa's and I'm not going to use an IP adapter and 
maybe change the seed to 666 if I'm feeling superstitious and hit it. So you can see it's going to go through and do all of the case samplers one by one. And if I bring your attention to the far right of my screen here, I just have my Windows Explorer tab. And uh, after all of the case samplers have done their thing, the you we blah, 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 we will see the folders, the images in those folders, and the text files um, appropriate to those files. If I set the batch size to four, you will you will be running four pictures per case sampler, um, which totals uh, a hundred pictures across the twenty five case samplers. Um, and those will be accompanied with the matching text file as well. The way I designed the book is if you keep your batch size the same, s s basically smaller or the same, um, it will continually overwrite the text files and folders. If you, for whatever reason, uh, start changing the concepts, it will create new folders but leave the old folders something to keep in mind if you're trying to get a, a specific amount of data and you can see here on the case sampler it's flipping through once twice three times so the first render is the initial render and then those two high-res fixes that I had explained before. Uh, the reason being is when we're training LoRa's, we definitely want the highest resolution possible um, in our training data because all of that kind of gets baked into the model. And of course, if you set the batch size to four, this might take a while. Um, and this is the main reason why I added the kill switch is the ability to toggle all of them off, only leave maybe like the first case sampler on. You can kind of tweak and dial the settings until you like what you see. Maybe toggle on a couple more, kind of test the concept across four, and then eventually run all of them. The other main feature of the kill switches is, for example, the images here. Uh, most of them are in the same style, but there are a few subjects, like I said, that don't get represented the same in basically all models. Uh, so for example, th these mountains here don't really fit with the rest of the style. Uh, and what I would do there is I would uh, toggle the off all the case samplers except for, in this case, it'd be number 11, right? 5, 10, 11. Leave 11 on and either start dialing the prompt uh, start dialing settings, um, basically allowing that granular control per subject in order to achieve a good style. And then right there you saw all the images were populated. And then down the side here, it's going through and saving all of the folders named correctly to our subject, which is our first uh, green box right here. And if I open one of these up, the hamburger even though this does not look like a hamburger you see the image uh, paired with a perfect text file and if we open up this text file we see trigger word and you can see the word hamburger has meshed here so in that case what we would need to do is put a comma and a space just like this and that would fix that problem but yeah, that's the a basic overview of the V2 of my synthetic data set creator. Uh, super fun to play with, even if you're never going to train a LoRa. It's uh, really fun to just shotgun a bunch of different subjects in, uh, in your workflow and see how, how the model represents specific things. So can't wait to see what you guys make of it. Um, love the community. And uh, yeah, hopefully I'll post some more stuff later.